Hello and welcome to another circuit build tutorial in Gran Turismo 7 and for those who are new to this channel and don't know how I tune, the way I like to do this is as cheap as possible and as simple as possible so that basically anyone can do it regardless of how many credits you have and regardless of what kind of racing you need to do. So the way that we're going to achieve that, much like the tunes that I've done before, like the 911 GT3 RS, is by just fitting racing suspension and racing diff. That's all you need to bring the vast majority of cars under control, and then if you want to add to that with less weight, more power, upgraded brakes, of course tyres, which alone make a massive difference, then all of that is down to you. I just want to show you what you can do with the bare minimum parts. So this time it was a suggested car, suggested by Ness, from the community here on the channel. And as I said, I mean, I'll show you in the shop, but all you need to do to do the exact version that I'm building is to fit it with the fully customizable limited slip diff that you can see there. And then for the racing section, the fully customizable suspension. Obviously other things will help, but like I said, we're keeping it simple. Now the next step of course, is to jump over to the test track that we always use on Dragon Trail. And then I'll show you the setup that I've got for the car. And then we'll, basically take a look at the difference between a completely stock one and just doing the suspension and diff. So as far as the actual tuning goes within, in particular, of course, the suspension and the diff, as you can see here, I've gone for a ride height of 70 millimeters, which is the lowest it can go. So for those who don't have millimeters, you don't even need to convert that. The anti-roll I've increased a little bit to five on the front and the back. The dampers for compression, we've got up to 38. Then for expansion, we've got 45. The frequency is on 2.45 and 2.65, which is dead center for both of those. I've got 1.5 degrees of camber, again, front and rear. I've neutralized the toe on the back to zero, as I mostly always do. And as far as the diff, we've got 20, 40, and then 20 again. And that is it for the tuning. As you can see, the performance points are 566.5. So it's not a huge jump. And again, that's the main reason why I do the tune this way, because on the one hand, you only pay like 30 grand to fit the parts, so it's dead cheap to do, but also it doesn't make the point level too high so that you can still use this thing for, you know, career mode events, online events, without changing too many things around, like taking off superchargers, etc., etc. So that's it as far as the tune. What about on the track, though? Well, the interesting thing about this build is, to be totally honest... <laughs> I don't think this car needs tuning. <laughs> the Viper already feels so good in this game that I would recommend giving it a try at least in its stock form before you even try tuning it up. Now for me, with this setup, it certainly did make it quicker, but the difference, to me at least, was almost not as enjoyable to drive. The primary purpose of these particular types of circuit tune that I do though is not necessarily trying to make the car like a top 10 fastest in the world kind of thing. These tunes are specifically designed for people who are not as into the physics of the game or newer to the game and just need the car to be a little bit easier to drive or under a little bit more control. So with that in mind, the car is a little bit heavier through corners, but still because the Viper is such a good platform, very controlled. So of course, as with the Porsche, what was the difference in lap? or with the stock one, and again, you can definitely refine these laps more and more, and I'm the farthest from being the quickest of drivers anyway, but for me, I ran the stock one with a 159.4. With this tune, which, as we've seen, of course, is only the suspension and the diff, it went to a 158.7. So literally 0.7 of a second, the best part of a second quicker than the stock version. So, uh, so that's a pretty significant difference with just suspension and diff, no extra power, no drop in weight, still running sports hard tyres, etc. Of course, running no driving aids apart from ABS. So it certainly does improve the car. It's just that I would strongly recommend at least trying to drive it stock. Where this tune will benefit you more, though, is if you give it more power because the Viper, by today's standards, is no way near as powerful, so it's much easier to control in this game. If you tune this thing up to, you know, seven, 800 horses, that's when this kind of thing's really going to come in handy to keep that under control. So if you decide to use this, I hope you find it helpful. Of course, stick around on the channel for more tunes. And if you want to see my other tunes, you can click this playlist on the screen. But until next time, I'll see you then. And for now, as always, 
Thanks for watching.